Our beliefs create our realities. And if there are realities in our lives that we don't like, yeah. we can change that belief. And then everything in our 3D reality will start changing as well. Hello, and welcome to the Connectedness Podcast. Just as you might have guessed, I talk about connection and connectedness on this podcast, our connection with everything in the world around us. Whether you see it or not, we're all connected, and it doesn't matter if it's our dog, our cat, our god, our body, and I'll also talk about some more abstract connections like our career or our land, our community, our emotions, your body. Life is all about connection, so the sooner we recognize that, the sooner we can have an easier, more meaningful life. I will talk about these connections through different lenses, things like synchronicities and coincidences, or just everyday little bits of magic and miracles that we, we usually dismiss. It's really important that we pay attention to all of this so we can live an easier, more meaningful life. So welcome to the show. I'm your host, Karen Cleveland. Welcome back, everyone. So great to have you here again. I have a really great guest today that is just has such great examples, especially this one huge example of how important it is to follow our gut and to listen to our intuition and to pay attention to the signs that are out there and to follow that. And so I'm really excited for you to hear his story and everything that he's doing. So my guest today is Giancarlo Tavares. And he's been able to read energies and thought forms, you know, past, present, future potential since he was a kid. He's been able to connect with people's animals and other people's pains and sicknesses and even past loved ones. And that's something I want to ask you about later, too, as well, if we have time. So knowing when a neighbor perhaps is about to pass or when a loved one's about to pass. So... I'm not going to get into too many details because I know he's going to tell you a lot of, of a lot about him today. So welcome to the show, Giancarlo. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's so great to hear you. And for my audience, I just want them to know, I first became aware of Giancarlo by something called the Coincidence Cafe that I've been participating in and where we talk about coincidences and how important they are in our lives. So it was great to hear your story on there. And that's, I'd really love for people, like I said, it's such a great example of you following what you had to do. So why don't you just go ahead and start telling your story of your move um, or however far back you want to go to the stage. So please. Thank you, Karen, for having me, Reverend Karen. And Thank you, anybody that may be watching or listening to this. My name is Giancarlo. I'm Dominican. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, Santiago Dominican Republic. Right now, I'm here in California in the new home that me and my partner and the kids just moved, but our kids, we have plenty of them. And um, I feel like sharing a brand new manifestation. Oh, so it's moved here. Great. A few days, days later, the water heater was broken and it started leaking. And my partner was like, okay, can you just call and make sure to see how can we replace it? And I was like, okay, cool. So I was calling yesterday and the lady that I was talking with, she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't think that's going to be possible that they're going to be able to replace it and for the home insurance to cover it. And I listened to her and in Inside of me, I was like, just watch me. Today, <laughs> <laughs> we had a guy called Anthony come check the water heater. And I was like, Anthony, we just moved here. Today's been exactly a week. Today, Friday. We have barely even used the showers and the water here is broken. Can you please help us and help them understand that we need them to cover it? And he looked at me and he was like, I'm going to help you and I'm, I'll make sure that they cover it. And like, it was such a different reflection than even the um, internet guy that came the other day that, yeah. to be honest, 
So it's okay to curse here. Yes. So yeah, so it is. High school energy. And I was never <laughs> no. And he was like, oh, here's my name and my number. Call me if you guys need anything. And I was like, in my, in my mind, I will never call you. Could I even have the uh, stair that I just borrowed from one of the neighbors? Because I wanted to explore the attic right here. And it was open and the internet got and came me without even asking me. He he got on the stairs. I'm on my phone because I, I was already feeling uncomfortable with this energy. And suddenly I hear this super noise. And when I come, it was him that fell from the freaking, the freaking ladder. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And he was like, this ladder is not good. You shouldn't be using this. And he said to myself, I'm like, duh, you don't even know. Right. If you're supposed to use that and you didn't even freaking ask me. And yeah. then when I was leaving, I was like, yeah, you shouldn't do that again when you, when you go to somebody's house. And, um. That's weird. Mm -hmm. He set up the internet. Everything is cool. And today, as I was calling it, we got it approved. Tomorrow, the other team for the water um, here are coming and they're going to replace it and now it's starting else. And that's $800 or more right there. Oh, wow. Well, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Do you feel like you've been able to manifest things like that just you know, your whole life, or is it relatively? Yeah. Yeah. It's very intentionally. When I was 17, living in Dominican Republic, and I wanted money to go to the bakery at the store, and my mother didn't have it or didn't want to give it to me, I would hear this intuition or this voice that would tell me, when you sing and dance, you can ask for anything you want, and you'll get it. Well. So I will start singing and dancing and singing to Jesus and singing, just like raising my vibration. And then I was like, okay, then I would ask or visualize or pray for what I wanted in that energy. Why? I, I could feel intuitively when I was able to access like a certain, what do I even call that? It's like a certain kind of frequency where you connect with the quantum in such a way that like whatever it is that, that you want, you can just grab it. That's the way. So that's the same thing that I did with the water, the water heater today. And when I would do that in Dominican Republic, my uncle Galileo, he would come at the door, knock, say hello, ask for my mother, then leave, come back and was like, oh, by the way. I just brought you these 20 pesos. Go get you something. <laughs> so tell me, for the for the water heater, do you literally still sing and dance or do you just get in that spirit in your in your body? For this situation, I just said the intention. I was okay. like, because my partner was like, ah, it doesn't matter if it doesn't cover it, we'll replace it. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to get it for free. Yeah. And I'm setting the intention right now. And I asked him to set the intention with me too. And then I just relax about it and I just trust. And yeah, I was open to the possibility that it was not going to happen. And at the same time, holding no to that intention. And as I go on up my day or I'm breathing or cooking or making love or whatever it is that I'm doing, I bring that intention with me. I was told the other day that I have access like a certain stage in my embodiment where I have developed or activated some kind of like technology in my DNA mm. that's able to access and manifest things. And I don't consider myself any manifestation expert. Like, okay. I'm not even rich. One person of my potential, what I'm here to do. And at the same time, when I looked at the movie of my life, I have manifested a lot of crazy shit, miracles in such like unexpected ways that for the logic linear in my mind doesn't make any fucking sense. Hey, is that right? So when you were young and, you know, maybe sensing that 
the passing of someone or communicating with a loved one that had passed. Was this something that you talked to your family about? And how was your family with it? I mean, was this weird or was that kind of normal in your family that people did stuff like that? I have found out after growing up a little bit that my grandma used to read cups of coffee. Oh. And when I was a kid, I remember her saying, I just had a dream about this, or I just had a dream about you, or I just had a dream about... And she was like very intuitive, even though she didn't really like cultivate it to degrees that we have. At the same time, I do believe that there is gifts and there is a blueprint that is passed to us from our ancestors and our right. DNA. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. And I actually, I like that terminology of saying I had a dream about, because sometimes if someone says I had a premonition or it came to me in meditation, or I heard someone say, you know, I heard the angel say something, it, it's not always well received. Have you run into any problems like that about people resisting what you're telling them or, you know, not accepting the kind of energetic or spiritual work that you do? Every day. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do about those people? Mm -hmm. If it's my partner, sometimes we start arguing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm also human. Like I have a strong and powerful intuition and at the same time I also have patterns. Yeah. Traumas and yeah. Traumas and all the jazz that come up in my relationship with my partner or with any other reflection. I don't know. That's true. The so, authenticity of the moment. I'm I'm curious, meeting your partner, is there a story to that about about intuition or coincidence? How did that happen? I was that was after I was homeless. You asked me before we started the call on how oh, yeah. I stayed like yeah. performing in all those places and Yeah. As I am thinking and feeling into it, I also I would do that when I was a kid, also in Dominican Republic, that I would ask my parents, oh, I want to go speak on TV. And they were like, what are you talking about? And yeah. so there was on the TV or in the TV show that, hey, that I wanted to. And it would happen in ways that I was not expected. So that the school would make a trip to the exact TV show that I loved and that I wanted to be on. And suddenly I was on it. Really? That's amazing. I was like in third grade or something like that. Wow. Um, there was a TV, TV host, El Pacha, that used to be one of my favorite TV hosts. And he would do a ketchup commercial in Spanish, in Dominican Spanish, is Cachu Linda, Linda Ketchup. And I would imitate him like I was him. And suddenly, I was on that TV show. Oh my gosh, I didn't even remember because you're, you're helping me remember my child. Suddenly, I was on the TV show. He was the host and he was asking me about the same commercial and I ended up imitating him. Oh, how funny. Like, stuff like that. You asked me about my partner. Many years later, when I moved from Florida to, to California, can you tell a little bit of that story for my listeners? When they moved from Florida? Yeah. So one day I heard, okay, they're moving to California. And I was like, no, to the no, I'm not. <laughs> and why not? Why didn't you want to? Just resistance. I don't have any friends there. I don't have any money. I don't know anything about California. Like, okay. Like, we're not doing California, blah, blah, blah. Just resisting okay the calling for seven months i was fighting it and my intuition was just getting louder and louder and louder and i was getting more and more depressed the friends that i was with were being more and more assholes and just like everything was indicating and telling me and screaming at me to to do it one day i was like okay i don't know how i'm gonna do it and I'm going to do 
whatever it takes. Mm. I asked a friend, Amy, back then, that was my friend. I was like, will you give me a ride to a gas station? I'm going to freaking ask truckers, people that were like driving on the way here. And I was going to ask them for a ride. Yeah. So I did all night long, one by one by one by one. Everybody was like, oh, I'm not going there. Or no, I don't want to do that. Or everybody yeah. was I was so tired. Yeah. The next day, I was posting and like kind of blogging my adventures. So this lady, Shoshana from Colorado, messaged me and she was like, I already bought your bus ticket all the way to California. You just need to go to this bus station. I believe it was like at 3 p.m. or something like that, which is the time that we started the this conversation, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Then she started telling me, oh, because you remember in 2013 when you and I met in that retreat in Puerto Rico and your husband was there and he was so beautiful and I just feel so grateful and I just like enjoy your company and your presence that I just want to contribute in some way. And I was like, Shoshana, thank you for the bus tickets. And... I have never in my freaking life in the Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm not married. Wow. And she was like, what are you talking about? I made you in Puerto Rico. Interesting. And, mm -hmm. Now, I know that that could have been a version of me in a different timeline, doing his magic to help me. Yeah. Where yeah. I am to and we may not be consciously aware of everything that is happening. And to me, that's what it means to actually be multidimensional beings. Yeah. We're here talking and at the same time, different parts of us could be doing energy work somewhere or in a training in New York or in Puerto Rico in a retreat with Shoshana or whatever it is. Right. And, and it could be going on right now, right? I mean, like. Something she said happened 10 years ago could actually be happening right now because there is no time. Exactly. Yeah. So There's all to make it happen with you. Yeah. Okay. I kind of have a story like that, but uh, that's awesome. I haven't thought of it that way. I'd love to hear it if you want to share it. Well, I, I can't remember exact details. What I do remember is I was going on a, a trip with someone else for a weekend, just a friend. And at the last minute, uh, he couldn't make it. But I went anyway, and it was a four-hour boat trip to get there. And I did a lot of personal um, forgiveness work against, you know, my past <laughs> healing work. And by the time I got to my destination, my room had been upgraded. And they said it had been done, you know, months ago. And it's like, I've been in contact, you know, four hours ago it wasn't. but But all of a sudden... You know, all these good things that suddenly happened when I got to the, uh, it, it was a perfect weekend. I mean, I was alone and I did more work and it was just, you know, I did writing. I did, it was a fabulous weekend, but I knew that a lot of the work I had done on the way helped lead to whatever supposedly happened, you know, prior to my arriving. So it's, I, I'm going to have to write it all out so I can actually say it like a good story. <laughs> But anyhow, so you got on the bus to California, even though you had never like actually met Shoshana. Bus. It was more like a million buses, um, I guess. Oh, yeah. So many buses. And in one of the buses, I met this girl that was living in San Diego. And we were talking and connecting and vibing and just sharing our stories. And suddenly out of the blue, this guy comes from behind me and he goes like this. And I was like. And he was like, here you go to support your journey. And he hands me a hundred dollars. Wow. Speaking Bali. And the girl next to me was like, and in moments like that, like, I was mostly fasting also. And when I do that, like, my intuition is really, like, more activated. In that moment, I just feel, Give the money to the girl. 
Mm. And I'm like, what? I just got it. And I was <laughs> like, okay. And I gave it to her and she started crying. And then she started saying, oh my God, thank you so much. I haven't eaten three days, so I'm going to be able to have my first meal. Oh. And yeah, it was beautiful. And two seconds later, the guy comes back, goes like this again, and hands me a hundred more. Oh my God. So we started freaking crying, and I was just so grateful. And that reminds me of another time that I was traveling with friends over the country, I went to this festival. And then as I was walking around, I had like a Jesus moment. And I was like, I felt guided by my intuition to go choose a group of people. And I was like, we're going to travel together. And they were like, what are you talking about? And then I kept doing that. And I chose, I don't even know how many people, like eight people or something like that. And then all of us ended up traveling together. Really? Mm -hmm. Two of them even ended up getting married and they have kids, Chris, and what's his um, wife? I forget her name right now. She's from Puerto Rico, by the way. Oh my God. <laughs> and Chris. <laughs> Chris is from Dallas, Texas. And they oh. got kids right now. Mm -hmm. And as we were traveling, though, we were going to Dallas, Texas, so Chris could go there. We went to a restaurant and we barely had anyone. And we ate breakfast in Amarillo, Amarillo, Texas. We ate the breakfast and then when we were going to go pay, the waitress was like, um, the person that was, uh, oh, it's already gone, but the person that was on that table, he already paid for you guys. Wow. And then we never saw who it was because According to her, he was there, and then suddenly he was not there. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. And but you live, it sounds like you live a lot doing whatever you are called to do, and it's taken care of. You don't, do you, do you not worry about things? Do you ever worry? Yeah, I worry a lot. And at the same time, there's this part of me that is like my soul power inner child power, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, that just believes. Like, it's a very strong, like, it reminds me of the song, do you believe in magic? Yeah. yeah. That would be Dallas. Yeah. It doesn't matter what may be going through in my life. It's like an unwavering faith that cannot be evolved. And I have gone through a lot of shit. And I have even been homeless a lot. And it really cheap and like, it really expanded me. It really showed me how real miracles and healings and just our ability to create our realities is, is really powerful. Even mm -hmm. though we, there's also many things that we're not able to control about yeah. our lives. At the same time, there's this magnificent ability I call it the video game. I call this reality the video game. Oh. And I was telling, like, I was just telling my partner before the call. I was like, this is just a video game, Devon. The more we continue learning how to play in, like, we just get the pieces together. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We are just kind of pieces in it, aren't we? All right. So meeting your husband, you were homeless at the time? I was already in my apartment in Los Angeles since I was 13, 12. I grew up in a, in a pretty dysfunctional home, like many, like most homes. And one of the ways that I was coping was with porn, isolating and with porn. And when I was in Los Angeles, I felt my heart telling me, okay, you need to start watching porn and you need to start developing a deeper relationship with me and healing. Oh. So I closed all those apps that I had, that I was using to have sex with guys. I closed the Twitter and everything that I had that I used to, to have a very strong porn addiction, by the way. 
I started developing a deeper intimacy with my heart and also just being more intentional about my life force and my sexual energy. After six months of that, I felt, okay, it's time to make somebody. So I made a list. I was very specific. I'm not saying that that's the way that it's going to work for everybody. But right. I feel guided at least in that moment to be very specific. So it was like, I want a brown man, a little shorter than me. I want him to be a Capricorn. I want him to have a big heart. I want him to have a beautiful smile. I want him to be a writer. I want him to have a big body or what? And I started to... <laughs> I want him to love children. I want him to drive, to, to love animals. And I just started describing everything that I wanted. I even described very specific things in the sexual department, which also came true. Everything that I asked for became true. Wow. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I feel, okay, go on the app. So I went on one of those gay apps that I used to use. It's called Scruff. I got a date with somebody else that same and at the same time. And suddenly when I opened it and I saw him, his aura was shiny. Everybody else disappeared. And I was like, oh my gosh, there he is. Mm -hmm. I messaged him, I started flirting with him, <laughs> and we, we got a date together, and the rest is history. Wow. Uh, we got together, he's a brown man, he's a Capricorn, he's a writer, he just published his first book, children's book, because finds his power. We were walking a baby, one of his amnesia's daughter, I believe it was, and we started joking, and we were like, what if we had children? Right. Well, and more dogs. And we started like a little <laughs> tree moment. Three months later, we had his four nephews and nieces. Wow. Four months. Three. Three months. It, four children. That's pretty quick. So that's that's like instant family. Are you both dealing with it all right? I mean. It's challenging and it's beautiful. and Yeah. Does transform and revolutionize our lives. And I feel that they, like I tell the band, they came here to teach us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So they have been our teachers. And like I tell my partner, they chose us. We didn't choose them. Right, right. That's, That's what I believe. Awesome. And, I, uh, I believe that too. Absolutely. You're teachers for them. They're teachers for you. Yeah, everyone's learning. Yeah. Yeah. We recently just adopted them. My partner nice. and mother just adopted them. And we were in the process of um, manifesting a new home for more than a year. And with the first home, it didn't happen. And now uh, well, recently, we asked, oh, we want to be in nature. We want to be close to water. We want a lot of like space in the house. Now we are in the mountains. There is a lake across the street. Oh, wow. We just found out that there's extra land, right? That is our, well, our property that we didn't know. So it's almost an acre, 5,000 square feet. Nice. You know, the dogs, the six dogs, and my cat, there's a cat too. They have more space and we're still settling and organizing just enjoying the new life and yeah it's still very surreal yeah because the process of manifesting the house kind of blocked for a moment we had like one day to get the documents that we need in order to close escrow oh both of us were getting a little worried already and i was like okay universe what do i do what do i do what do we need to do is there any resistance is there like what's blocking it and I feel that the divan, my partner, was in resistance. So I went to begin my sir massaging his feet, just loving him. And then I guided him into a process to connect with the part of him that was resisting yeah. the, the process of the house. Good for you. 
as soon as we did that, he got the, the documents that we needed and it was extended and everything. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a, it is a process for sure. So yeah, you talked about listening to your guidance and just, you know, for the listeners, do you have any particular way that you like to listen to your guidance or that you help other people listen to their guidance? Because sometimes people don't really know when it's their guidance or what it is. For me, it depends in the moment I can see it or I can hear it or I can feel it or I just know it or I feel my body guiding me into certain actions. For anybody watching, it could be whatever ways you receive the information. Yeah. If you're more mental or okay. more feminine, intuitive side, like, like I am, you could receive it with a song or you can sense something or you could smell something or you could feel a guidance to do it in a certain way or there are certain signs and certain synchronicities that will show up in your reality that if you pay attention to it, it will guide you like i call it to your next right move <laughs> that's a good point it could come in so many different ways and I think people receive the guidance a lot. They just dismiss it, right? Because they don't believe it or they're afraid, like you did for seven months in Florida. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. So you do readings for people or you do appointments, I guess I should say, for people and readings. How do you help people? What's your method of working, you know, whether it's doing readings, whether it's guiding them to their own intuition or What's your favorite methodology, I guess? My favorite methodology is the one that wants to arise in that moment to help according to the frequency, the state. It's not something that I plan, it's just a guidance that I found. Mm -hmm. Just surrendering to whatever direction my higher self or their higher self or our guides or the leading force in our yeah. Guiding. Okay. Me, sure. I'm just, I'm like a facilitator. I just surrender to the process and then we're like, right. yes, that makes sense. Or like, yes, I felt that. Or, oh my gosh, I feel so much lighter. Or holding space with our emotions or with our inner child or just speaking into a situation intuitively or coming into their chakra system and Sealing leakages. I don't know. Depends what they what they need. Right, right. So you're very intuitive on what a person needs, um, and and just kind of work from there. Sounds like. So let me ask you. I don't think I mentioned in your bio when I introduced you about being part of the gay men's course in Los Angeles. Are you still a part of the course? I am not. You're not. Okay. But you did sing and dance coincidentally because you were talking about singing and dancing is how you manifest things. And I think it's interesting. I have learned that when I dance, I something my listeners have never, ever heard me say, I'm sure. But I have learned when I dance, that's when I am connected best with my source. And when I need answers... You know, when all else, else fails, I start dancing and many things have come to me that way. And I don't do it enough. And I always say I want to dance and I don't do it enough. But when you were a part of the chorus, did you feel like because you were in that space more often, I presume, kind of in that like connected space of, you know, being with the one, did you feel like? It was easier for you to manifest things or it was just, you know, it was just like just another part of your life and you still had to use your other, you know, intuitive hits and, and everything else that helped you, you know, manifest what you need in life. It was easy and at the same time, the journey to fully anchor that can be very challenging because when I received the guidance to, to join I was, I used to be homeless and I, um, I was sleeping at the Santa Monica Pier in the city of Santa Monica and 
all over the place on the beach. God. That was the only place that I would feel a little bit more safe and also like I could really do that. Cause wow. At the pier. Yeah. Okay. I would sleep underneath it. Have you oh. been to it? Yeah. yeah. M- many times. Yeah. I'm, I live in Seattle, but I love Southern California and Santa Monica. So, yeah. yeah. So that was my bed in my house for almost a year. I was um, living out there and I feel that there was a time of preparation to help me just continue in the journey of activating more of who I really am. A part of me really loved it because I was really close to the ocean. Yeah. And like I called her Mama Ocean. I would talk to her, I would sing to her, I would just be with her. I still do. In fact, now we ended up manifesting a water business that made oh. my heart of living water. And when I was homeless, I feel, okay, it's time for you to share your voice and to share your kids. Oh. I was like, what's the right next step? And she said, go online. Find an organization that you wrestle with and share your voice. So I started looking, I looked theater, I looked everything. Suddenly I found the Game is Girls of Los Angeles website. When I found it, uh, it yeah. here it is. So my audition, that was a freaky miracle to make it to the audition because I was late. Oh. I was resisting it. So me and my um, homeless friend, we made it all the way over there. He almost had to drag me because I was like, oh, I'm just going to give up. I, I was scared. We were super late. We had to even jump a door to go oh. eat. It was already closed. Oh, my God. And the building manager was like, are you guys freaking crazy? And I was like, I apologize. I'm just so late for this solution. And I really want to do this. And then we made it through the door. They let us, they welcome us and let us eat. I did the audition. Before that, in Florida, back then, a singer called Gloria Trevi, a Mexican rockster called Gloria Trevi, used to be my favorite singer. And I started having dreams with her that I was performing with her and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, wow, this is so cool. And I didn't think more and more to it. Then, I auditioned for the Game Squares of Los Angeles more than like almost two years later. I didn't think they were going to call me. They called me. It was like when my friend was telling me, he was like, oh, by the way, they called you from GMCLA. And I was like, they said no, right? And he was like, they said yes. And I was like, I know <laughs> you were going to say, what did they say? <laughs> And when I was at the pier, the Santa Monica pier, I started visualizing for some freaking reason that I was performing at the farm. Oh. And every time I would, because I would sleep underneath the Santa Monica pier and then I would perform on top of it. I became a street performer and I would sing and dance and just. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, and I started visualizing that I was performing at the Santa Monica Pier. Then I auditioned for GMCLA. And then John Durant, the West the Mayor of West Hollywood, said, you guys have been invited to perform at the Forum. Wow. You guys are going to open for Gloria Trevi. Wow. What a dream. Cool. Everything just became like slow. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's true. And when he said that, I just knew, like, it was like yeah. that version of me that already did that, like integrated. And I just knew that I knew that I knew that I was going to be one there. In fact, when we were auditioning for the parts, like I was not fucking playing. Like, <laughs> that part of me would just streak over me and I was, and I would start moving and talking and singing like, like I was really. Wow. I was not only one of the guys that opened the song at the forum in front of 15,000 people wow. of being homeless. I was the first one that wow. opened the song. And I have the YouTube video to show you. I can share it in there. 
I can share it with you. And I'll... yeah, we'll put a link to it on the in the show notes. So you were the first one out there singing. That's fantastic. Not only that, I got to hang out with her in the recording studio, went to pictures. Uh -huh. Because she was busy doing an interview, and because I was homeless, to make it on time for the uh, rehearsal, I stayed and slept outside of the recording studio. Oh. So because I was so early, and because they could probably see and feel like I was not playing, <laughs> they used me to sing her parts with the band. In the recording studio, because oh my gosh. they make. So for the rehearsals themselves, there was supposed to be her. They used me. Wow, it's just crazy. That that is crazy. I mean, yeah, that's all so magical, isn't it? And I know that doesn't mean everything in life is magical, but it's it's really interesting how these great, fantastic things fall together sometimes. That's awesome. With our beliefs create our realities. And if there are realities in our lives that we don't like, yeah. we can change that belief. And then everything in our 3D reality will start changing as well. Yeah. You know, that is a process and that uh, we are all in the healing, this healing journey. And that many times we can be very hard on ourselves. I am. And at the same time, I'm remembering more and more that the more I shift or integrate or heal or give presence to a part of me that is triggered or feeling certain emotions or feeling separation or feeling shame or feeling whatever it is that it may be feeling, I don't need to be in a perfect <laughs> state 24 yeah. yeah. Because to me, that is not even number one, authentic. No, two, that's not in alignment. Like, not all the time, 24 single, we're going to be laughing in our little line fads. Like, I could trigger every five seconds. So I'm always feeling through, <laughs> through something. Yeah. Oh, I know. And that's why we're here, right? I mean, we're here to figure out, I, well, there's so many reasons, I think, but to learn how to deal with that, to learn how, you know, What's what's our better response to something, or what do we like? What don't we like? Mm. So much for us to figure out for ourselves. So much learning going on for our own souls' evolvement, I guess. So um, we've been talking a little longer than I realized. I love talking with you, but it's just about time to to wrap this up. So if someone wanted to work with you, where would they find you? You know, do you want to say something about how? you know, the work you do with people or where to look for you on the internet or, you know, how, how people uh, might find you. I'm going to share my link tree with you. So okay. That, my website and how yep. access to all my social medias and you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, yeah. Giancarlo Tavares. And if you like my email, Giancarlo Tavares, one, 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 at gmail.com. Perfect. Thank you. And actually, one more thing that I remembered. You're writing a book. Is that right? Do you want I'm to share anything uh, about that? Yeah. I just joined a eight weeks container with a coach called Janet Brent. And I'm going to start writing my first book. I'm also designing a tarot card. Oh. I'm connected. Um, my partner Paul wrote and published his first children's book. Nice. Finds his power. So now I'm also in the process of creating the Ikers Finds His Power tarot cards. I love that. It's going to be so cool. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. All right. Well, good. Then I have that that all to look forward to, your book, your tarot cards, and, and who knows what else will come out from you. So Thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. And maybe we can continue a conversation and talk about your book and cards one day when they're out. Hello? Definitely have a reading with them. So Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, Gary. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. And to my listeners, thank you for being here. And look in the show notes or on my Facebook page for the links to Giancarlo's information. And we'll connect with you later.
If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to head over to RevKarenPodcast.com. That's R-E-V-K-A-R-E-N Podcast.com. There you're going to find the tools for finding more meaning and happiness in your own life. Plus, if you have a story that you want to share with me, either on or off the air, be sure to look for that form. Make sure you follow me so you get notified when new episodes drop. And also, I'd love to connect with you in my Facebook group, Connectedness with Rev Karen. So head over to RevKarenPodcast.com. I hope to see you there.